Hey guys, and welcome back to another video on the Road Builder YouTube channel. Today, we're going to have a full tutorial on Roblox beams. Ever since I made a video creating the ramps for the dream game, aka these bad boys right here, a ton of people have asked how I made these arrows on it and how this beam is curving with the ramp. We're going to go over all of that right now. Also, real quick, uh, I don't know why this is happening, but I'm super stoked. There is 90 active players on our dream game testing place right now. That's the most it's ever had without a video being published, no ads, uh, no streams, nothing. 90 players. Anyways, sorry, let's get into the beams. Now, if you're unfamiliar with what beams are, I'm going to explain it in not a scientific sense, but something that's very easy to understand. To put it in the most simple terms, by no means a scientific explanation, a beam is a moving texture or a way to make textures move. A lot of people use these for waterfalls, water flowing, lava, literally anything to make a texture move. Hetsim even uses it on their doors. So let's say we have this texture right here, and we want to make it into a beam. Well, very simply, insert an object called beam. Then you want to copy this texture ID and paste it into where the beam texture thing is in properties. Now you might be thinking, bro, it's not moving, and why isn't it? This is where a lot of people get confused and don't exactly know how beams work. For a beam to work, you need a point that it starts and a point that it stops. And to do that, we're going to use attachments. So let's insert another object. Search for attachment. We're going to put one on this side and we're going to control D to duplicate and put one on the other side. You should name these just so you don't get the two confused. It doesn't matter what you name them, but just name them so they're not both called attachment. I'm going to name mine start and stop because that is the easiest for me. We could delete this texture on the part. And now if we go into our beams properties, you can see right down here, attachment zero and attachment one. You're going to click on this empty box and then just click on one of your attachments. For attachment zero, I am going to use the start and attachment one, I'm going to use the stop. Now, as you can see, we have sort of the beam. We're going to bring both of these attachments up and this is that texture repeating. We're going to rotate these 90 degrees so it goes right on the top of this part and then just position these so it's not clipping into the part. And now we can start having fun with all of the beam properties. This is where things get cool. So hop back into the beam and there is so, so much. Let's just scale it up so we can see them all. First one, of course, is color. We all know how this works. You select the color, the texture changes to that color. And if you didn't know, you could select beside it and actually make a gradient. Let's go ahead and make a cool blue one for this. I'd say something like that looks pretty cool. Then you have this quick enable and disable. Just helpful if you're getting a headache looking at them or if you want to script it for players later. Maybe you're using beams as an attack and you want to enable it when they click. Just a quick example. Up next, light emission and light influence. These, I don't know the best way to explain them, but they're very self-explanatory when you start playing with them. So light emission is how much light is coming off of the beam and light influence. I don't exactly know. I know you can adjust these all over the place to get the, the right look that you want, but I don't know the science behind it at all. Up next is texture, which we already put in. And then we have texture length. So right now, uh, I don't think we can really stop this. Okay, we can. So right now, if we look at just this area here, this square, this is the texture's length. And if we adjust that right here, you'll notice that it either gets smaller or bigger. We're going to want these to be quite a bit smaller, something around here, I'd say. Texture mode, we have stretch, static, and wrap. Nine times out of 10, stretch is where you're going to want to keep this. It's always what works the best for me. Texture speed is just how fast this is moving. And if you want it to move the other way, you will go to a positive instead of a negative. Transparency, I mean, come on, guys. We know what this is. If we have zero, you can't see through it. If we have 0.9, it's almost invisible. We'll keep that at a 0.3 for now. Z offset, you could pretty much ignore 90% of the time. I've never used it once in the whole time working with beams on studio. 
Now this is where the beams actually start to get fun. We could skip our attachments because we already set those up. And then we have curve size zero and curve size one. This is how you're gonna fit a beam to let's say a ramp. Let's go ahead and move this up. And that's a pretty straight ramp. But if we go back to our beam properties and just bend this, you could see we're starting to get that ramp look. And it doesn't stop at 10. You could type in any value here. Let's say 50, absolutely crazy. 20 looks like a pretty good ramp. The other curve setting is just gonna start bending it from the other attachment point. So curve size zero is our start attachment and curve size one is our end attachment. But as you can see, you do really cool stuff with beam shapes and a lot of people use these for VFX. Now you might be thinking, bro, this doesn't even fit the whole part like it used to. All we gotta do there is change the width. So let's see how big this is. And then just paste that into our beams. So 27, I think it was. Yeah, look at that. And as you can see, this already looks so, so cool. If we don't want it to get all crazy like this, we just put 27 in the other side as well. Boom, now we have a very cool wave. One more kind of cool settings that beams have, which is good in specific use cases, is facing camera. If we check this, no matter where our camera is, the beam is gonna try its best to follow us so we're always looking at its uh, quote unquote good side. But most of the time this will mess up VFX, especially when you start getting a bit more complex. So we're gonna tick that off. That is how you use beams and pretty much everything you need to know. Keep in mind all of these sliders that quote unquote cap out, for example, texture length to five, you can just type in any number after that and avoid the cap. If there is any beam specific questions you guys have, leave them down below and I'll be sure to answer them. And speaking of questions, let's get into the daily ones. Question number one from Ty, Titan, 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 Titan. I think that's what we're going with. May I ask how you all made the minimap? I'm guessing you're referring to the dream game and I do have a minimap video. If you want to go check that out, just type in how to make a minimap role builder or something and it should pop up for you. I think that video was pretty short and by the end of it, you'll have a fully working minimap even if you don't know how to script. Question number two from Zola. That's what we're going with once again. When will you finish the horror game? Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, 100, five. I don't know. <laughs> it's like it's, it's not at the top of my priority list right now. It needs a lot more planning. And overall, I just wasn't having a lot of fun building it. I'm sure the series will come back in a killer way in the future, but right now I have no, no thoughts about it. No will or want to work on it. So someday, Road Builder will indeed finish the horror game, but that someday is gonna be kind of far away. <laughs> if you guys did enjoy this video and wanna see more content like this, please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. I have plenty more tutorials on the channel if you are a new developer and plenty of challenges if you want to see me cry. Anyways, have a great day. Later.